So this pot here is what we call a, call a pressurised pot. What's the difference between this and the micro combo valve pot that I had previously? Well primarily this pot is designed to hold its pressure. So in the top, fundamentally it's the same. You've got a pop-up valve, a stand pipe to feed the pop-up valve which goes in here. And then you've got your moisture separator, you've got the main air that comes through and down through a different valve and then down the pusher line. So what this one does, it works in sequence. Consequently, it picks up the main air, which is coming in here. So you've got your mince-up coupling, ball hose, compressor, a ball valve, moisture separator, main air line. And then what it's doing now is it's picking up the main air and coming through a moisture trap down to, oh look, a dead man, quarter inch, a pilot valve, dead man return, a muffler, and a positive line. So when I say a positive line, that's only active when the air is allowed to come through this pilot valve and down to the alternate valves. So what's the advantage of a pressurised pot? Basically, when I let the dead man handle go, the pressure in this pot remains there. So that means that every time I let the dead man go, the pressure, the air pressure in the pot is retained. So as opposed to the micro combo valve, which is using a lot of air every time I let the dead man go, it's by exhausting the air that's in the pot, this is maintained. So this pot here is slightly more responsive in relation to the dead man actuation. Because when I open the dead man, that means I've got air there immediately. It doesn't have to shut the pop-up valve, build up pressure, and then start to work down the pusher line. That means that this one here, when I open the dead man, there is positive pressure there all the time. So this pot is only exhausted when I turn the air off and open this valve. So you must remember when you open this valve and turn this one off and open this valve to exhaust the pot, there's a lot of air comes out and if the pot's too full you'll have grit come out of there as well. What we try to do is put, what we endeavour to do is put mufflers on these to keep the noise at what we deem an acceptable level. So it's important with these particular pots you don't overfill them because by exhausting the valve here you can undermine the integrity of the ball inside that valve. So to keep you safe what we do is we attach the bull hose on here and again with any bull hose, two inch bull hose, we put safety pins in either side. Not just one, we always put two. We check that the gasket is concentric, it's flat on the face and it's in good repair. With this valve, we always have this valve turned off when we're attaching all this. And we always make sure that this valve in this particular pot is always open when it's not in use. So therefore, what would happen if I put air on this particular line and open this valve, it immediately starts to exhaust, which is an indication to me that I've got air, but the pot's going to exhaust. So that means I have a, positive, a pot that's positive. It's got air in it, it's ready to go. So before we turn that air valve on, we make sure we close this valve. Make sure the air's right, the coupling's right, the pins are in. Then we open this valve. Now with all these blast pots that have got this moisture separator that's, that's on there, it's just a, a pressurised bowl, there will be air coming in and spinning through this, which will flick the moisture to the outside of it. If you have an after cooler in line, you'll find that any moisture will be significantly reduced or diminished. However, even with an after cooler or an air prep on this particular air supply line, I'll open this quarter inch tap slightly, but I, when I say open it, I'll only crack it minutely. With it cracked, it enables the moisture and the air to weep out through the bottom, so there can't be any moisture accumulation come through the pot and through the operational aspects of the internal part of the pot. Remember what I said, Moisture, as far as blasting, abrasive blasting is concerned, is your biggest enemy. It will corrode the inside of the pot. It will undermine all of these particular valves and reduce their longevity. So with this valve open, this one closed, I now have air coming through here. You will find that the pop-up valve shuts or closes itself 
automatically. So again, I use a lid and screen. I fill the pot with the screen on there to stop any debris going in there and it reduces the risk of somebody putting their hand in there and chopping them off if the pot's pressurised again. It will cut your fingers off. But this pot, the pop-up valve will only come up when I open this valve and close that one. So to fill this pot, what I need to do is close the air in and exhaust the pot with this valve. So once it's exhausted, the pop-up valve no longer has pressure underneath itself and will drop down and enable me to fill the pot. The advantage of this pot here is that because it has a supply line going here through a pilot valve, this here is the signal aspect of the pot itself. So this is the primary activating valve. So the quarter dead man line is attached here. The eighth dead man line, the return line, the green one, is attached on the end. This pilot valve, what happens is when I open the dead man and complete a full circuit of air, this signal air goes down to the dead man and is returned through this one. This pushes the pilot valve piston across to enable a port to open and that port when open will allow the air to travel down this hose all the way down to this particular item here which is called an auto air valve. Now an auto air valve, what that does is that will, from the diaphragm, push or, or remove a piston inside here off the seat. So in this case, when you activate the dead man, the diaphragm opens or fibrillates up and allows the piston to remove off the seat. Then the air can travel down further, down the pusher line, to another valve on the bottom called a Thompson valve. On the top of this pilot valve here, we have a little exhaust port, which is called, a, it's actually a muffler, this small round section. Because it's a blast pot, it doesn't mean that it's, it's okay if you get it dirty. You must keep all these areas clean. Now also too, you'll notice standing on the top here is another pressure relief valve. The pressure relief valve is designed in such a way that if there's excessive pressure put into this blast pot, this is the safety relief valve. Periodically, because these pots are pressure compliant, and the compliance is always on the identification plate and the pressure vessel registration information is always on the pots. The two coincide with each other so this particular item here has to be changed periodically in conjunction with the requirement of the pressure vessel registration information. So do you pull it apart yourself and have a look inside? The only thing you'll do is it, at any stage if need be, is take it out and just have a look up the end of this particular item and all it is, is a tapered seat, a piston into tapered seat. I don't suggest you pull any of this apart because it is a registered piece of equipment and it's there as a safety item. Most of the safety inspectors or pressure vessel, pressure vessel inspectors are the only people that can ascertain as to the integrity of that particular valve. So I suggest that if there is a problem with it, just change it, just change it. Don't dismantle the valve itself. So, <coughs> pardon me, so this valve will release excessive pressure. So say for example, I'm putting 200 PSI in, in this pot, this will automatically start to release pressure to indicate to you that there's a problem as far as the amount of pressure or excessive pressure that's been pushed into this pot. Paramount importance, keep them clean, don't play with them. So the signal, as I said, positive side, comes up through this moisture strainer, back down through the pilot valve. So when I actuate the dead man and this auto air valve opens, it also too tells the Thompson valve too to lift off the seat and allow the grit to come through. So it's a pretty clever arrangement. On this auto air valve, there's a small gauze breather on the top. Periodically, that breather needs to be undone, blown out, inspected, cleaned, and put back in. This is why I say you've got to keep this clean.